Today, I'm going for our first run in the Saucony Triumph 17. Six point four three miles, nine minutes, thirty eight seconds per mile, one hundred and forty beats per minute today. Trying to get a little bit back into my regular routine and run commuting from work to go pick up my kids uh, at the end of the school day today, and going for a first run in the Saucony Triumph Seventeen. Uh, this is exactly the shoe that I needed for this kind of run. But before I get too deep into my thoughts, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I purchased with my own money. No one sent this shoe to me. Uh, no one's paying me to make this video or to wear this shoe. Uh, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video up on YouTube. Now with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Saucony Triumph 17. So this is a shoe that I've never run in before. I've never run in the Triumph series, but this year with the Power Run Plus that they put in the, to the midsole, I've been very excited about it. I've also been very excited about more max cushion shoes generally as I've been running more miles than I ever have before. And so this was something that I've been very keenly interested in. Uh, I've seen Parker Stinson doing a lot of his workouts actually in this shoe, even though it's a max cushion shoe, I wouldn't really think that that would go together. Uh, but I thought I'd give it a shot. There's been, I think some mixed reviews out there. So I really wasn't sure what to expect from it. But what I had done was I bought this pair of shoes and I kind of saved it specifically for kind of my recovery after the marathon because I knew it would be a max cushion shoe. So what we've got here, the main thing that I was looking for and looking forward to uh, is all this stuff that's going on back here. I think that Saucony calls this form fit when they've got basically all this like memory foam that's back here. I've seen it before in some of my other favorite Saucony shoes like the Saucony Ride GTX 10, which was my favorite Saucony shoe ever. I think it was my first Saucony shoe ever as well. Um, but back here, it's literally like memory foam. You put your foot in it and it just feels great. It's very inviting, very comfortable. When your feet are beat up, this just feels really nice. Padded heel collar, padded tongue, everything is just super padded. Not so great in the summertime, like when I was running in the Saucony Ride ISO and the Saucony Ride ISO 2. When things get hot or when this shoe gets wet, this just soaks up liquid. But right now it is just above freezing temperatures in Chicago. So not uh, anything that I'm concerned with, either too much water or heat at the moment. Uh, and this was a very welcome, just felt really great to be running in this as I'm recovering from a marathon. The laces are nice and soft and stretchy. So everything just up here is comfort. Even the toe box, uh, very stretchy material up here in the toe box reminds me a lot of, again, those other Saucony shoes that I've been really enjoying, Saucony Ride series. Uh, and the upper just felt really, really nice. Even though my feet are really beat up after the marathon, upper was just absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, the main thing that I wanna talk about with this shoe though is in this midsole and this new Power Run Plus material. I think this is the first shoe from Saucony that's getting this Power Run Plus uh, treatment. And I'm looking forward to more shoes that get it because I love it in this shoe. This material is great. It's supposed to be 28% lighter is one of the things that they tout for it. It feels great to run on. What I'm looking for in a long distance like recovery shoe or a slower pace shoe um, or a max cushion shoe in general is just when I'm running in it, my feet feel pampered. What typically goes along with that in a lot of max cushion shoes, however, is a little bit of a sink in feeling. It feels a little bit muddled. It feels a little bit like you're running in like not sand, but something that's not as firm because it's cushioned uh, and your foot doesn't push off quite as briskly. And so you're working a little bit harder uh, to get through the gait cycle and keep moving quickly. I didn't feel that with this. Uh, they tout it as being springy. I'd probably call it bouncy a little bit. Uh, and I really enjoy this. Um, 
The comparisons to Boost certainly come to mind, not only because of the way this looks, but also in the way it feels as well. And it reminded me in the heel a lot of the things that I've been feeling in the Ultra Boost 19, but the midsole is everything that I wish the Ultra Boost 19 was. The Triumph 17 really nails it with the amount of foam they're putting in here and the amount of cushion versus pushback that I'm getting with the shoe as I'm stepping through the gate cycle and getting to run uh, another stride. It just feels great. And so I'm really excited about this Triumph 17. The other thing that I will note about this shoe, it's a lot more flexible some, than some of the other foams that I've run in from Saucony in that sometimes in a Saucony shoe, it feels a little bit like I'm running on like um, a platform and not in terms of height, but in that like the shoe is very stiff and trying to tell me and tell my foot kind of how to land. It's trying to like push me in a certain direction. Um, I don't feel that with this. I feel like the shoe is giving me enough stability that my foot's not getting too wonky, but at the same time, it's letting my foot land and hit the ground and then push off in a way that my foot wants to do that. So it's giving me a little bit uh, of that freedom to do what I want to do. So I don't feel like I'm fighting the shoe at all. So ultimately I'm thinking right now, it's really early to give any final thoughts on this shoe. It's my first run back from marathon, only 10 K in the shoe, but I'm very excited to be logging a lot more miles in this shoe. And I'm especially excited to see what it's going to be like on the 15 mile runs, the 20 mile runs, especially when I start getting to insert some speedier miles in there as well, just because of just the dynamics of the shoe, the amount, and I think the just right amount of foam that they've put in the midfoot here uh, and the flexibility that I'm getting uh, from this foam material, I think it's gonna be a pretty exciting shoe to run in. I think right now is a fantastic time uh, for max cushion shoes. I think they're more exciting than ever. I think they're more accessible than ever. This shoe on paper is a little bit heavy, uh, over 10 ounces as, as the listed weight, but uh, and it feels heavy in hand. I'll definitely give you that, um, even despite the fact that they say that it's 20% lighter as, as far as the foam goes. Um, but on foot, it felt pretty nimble, for, it felt pretty light. Uh, I felt like it was working with me, so I think it's a well-balanced shoe. So I'm not too concerned about the weight, at least for the way that I'm intending on using this Max Cushion shoe. I also love the way uh, that this one looks. So those are my first thoughts on the Triumph 17. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions about the shoe uh, down in the comments below. I'd love to talk to you guys about it a little bit more down there. Uh, before I go for today, I do wanna talk about the new Cherry Runner for this week. This week, it's Bruno Artacho, who's gonna be running the Rock and Roll DC Marathon coming up on March 1st, and he's raising money for St. Jude. I was happy to donate $70 to Bruno's fundraising efforts, and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making all the way to the end of the video, and I will see you tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?